Go to Psalm 3. Psalm 3 is the first psalm with a title. And the title is part of the original Hebrew text and should therefore be taken very seriously. Uh, some Bibles omit these titles, um, others uh, insert them, uh, and others again treat them as a separate verse. And that's the reason why, in some cases, the verse numbers in Psalms uh, can differ, differ a bit. But in any case, the title here, a Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son. It gives us the context of what is recorded in, um, in 2 Samuel in the chapters 15 through 18. And it's a, it's a sad story, of course. Um, where David's own son Absalom is after um, the throne and basically after his father's life. So that's the situation and uh, in, this, um, in this light this psalm is uh, written as a prayer to God while David is fleeing. And so uh, I made uh, um, again a um, schematic of this psalm layout and we see uh, as is often the case it's divided into four parts um, each of two verses um, the first two groups have to do with David's trouble and God's help and then in the, in the second half the last two groups of two have to do with the blessings um, that David received from God and uh, in how he blesses God for what God has done for him. So let's start with verse 1. In verse 1 it says, Lord, how they are increased that trouble me. Many are they that are rise up against me. So David presents here his dire situation to the Lord. His own son, Absalom, was re leading a rebellion against him. And many of David's former friends and allies had joined Absalom. And he was therefore uh, greatly outnumbered and he was greatly troubled. And we read about this um, in uh, 2 Samuel 15 uh, verses 12 uh, and 13 uh, where it says, um, and the conspiracy uh, was strong for the people increased continually with Absal Absalom. And there came a messenger to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. Absalom had done a good job in campaigning. He, you can read that in 2 Samuel beforehand. He went throughout the entire nation and um, he gained a lot of popularity. And so when his rebellion began, people started to join him uh, by the multitudes and um, David was troubled but David had one thing that the others did not have his God his God and the psalm begins with Lord David speaks to his God that makes all the difference he continues then in, in the verse 2 many there be which say of my soul there is no help for him in God, Selah. Now, there is something very um, specific here, because at first glance you see there is no help, um, but um, he says that they say this of his soul. Many were saying that David's soul was beyond help. He had committed adultery, and uh, they believed, therefore, that he had lost not only his right to the throne, but his right or access to the afterlife. They believe that David was just getting what he had deserved. And that is made clear also by um, Shimei. Um, 
If we read that in 2 Samuel 16, verse 7 and 8, um, it's, it reads there, And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hands of Absalom, thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief because thou art a bloody man. Now Shimei was uh, of course extra um, angry because he is a family member of, uh, of Saul. So, um, but nonetheless he is saying you have blood on your hands uh, and you deserve what you get. Or you get what you deserve rather. Um, the idea was that not that God was un unable to help David, but that God was unwilling to help David. And that is what troubled David. Uh, no matter the situation, if there's no help for us in God, then all hope is lost. But the next verses show that God was still with David. But this verse, verse 2, ends with the word Selah. Selah is a strange word that occurs 74 times in the Old Testament and is very hard to translate. There is actually no consensus about the meaning. Some say it's a musical term, which makes perfect sense because we see it in the Psalms, which are uh, songs uh, and they are written for um, to be played and to be sung. So uh, it could be a musical term, um, meaning a pause or rest, or uh, a musical term meaning crescendo, because um, the root word salah means to rise up or to build up. So it could mean that. Others thinks, think that it is a sort of amen, but no matter what, it makes a stop uh, and think of what has just been said. It's When we read, it's like an exclamation point. David then continues. In verse 3, now that he has laid out the case, the dire situation, now comes the, uh, God's help, the response. Verse 3, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. Although many said there was no help for David in God, he knew that God was his shield. And this is really a token of his faith. We read in Ephesians 6, in verse 6, about um, the shield, uh, the, 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 the armor of God, and, and specifically in verse 6 it mentions the shield of faith. Um, we need strong faith. It will work as a shield. God is our shield. God was David's shield. He didn't pray for God to shield him, but he was declaring a fact. You, Lord, are my shield. It's an established fact. He knew that. And in addition, God is the one to lift up David's head. He could have his head down for different reasons, in shame for what he had done, because he had sinned greatly, but also maybe um, because of hopelessness, of the fact that he was outnumbered and um, would normally be, be chased down and killed. But the Lord lifted up his head. And David is confident that God will restore his dignity, his glory. And he doesn't find glory anywhere else but in God. God is not only his shield, he is also his glory. And the lifter up of his head. And we will see in the next psalm that David continues on this, uh, this theme. For now, we go to verse 4. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. For sure, silent prayers are heard. God wants us to think of him. But God wants, also wants to hear us. David cried. With his voice, he says specifically, I cried with my voice. It was audible. His voice was all that was needed to appeal to God, his shield. And God heard him. 
And that proved the wrong of all those who said that there was no help for him in God. We should not listen to men, but to God only. And that is what David did. And that gave him assurance that God heard him. Because that is the second part of this verse. It's not only that he cried out to God, but God heard him. He knew, he was convinced, he was sure that God heard him. And that is often, often missing in prayer life. Um, yeah, by the way, uh, this psalm and many of the psalms teaches a, a good lessons about prayer. Uh, I definitely can need them. Uh, so, but that's often what fails in prayer life, that, um, that we, we speak, yes, but um, we may even cry out. But often we fail to listen, to hear. But David did. And thus he knew that God had heard him. Absalom had forced David out of Jerusalem. And it is thought that David went eastward. So first to the Mount of Olives, from where he looked upon the city, upon uh, Mount Moriah. Uh, the Temple Mount as we know it, but there was no temple at that time yet. Um, but it was God's holy hill. He knew that. Um, it's interesting that you imagine David looking upon that place without a temple, just like it's today. There's no temple. And it's the same place where Jesus was with his disciples and they were looking upon the temple, which was there at that time. And Jesus foretold, no stone will be left upon the other. And here we are in the prophetic times that we live. Anyway, David was looking upon God's holy hill. And that's what he refers to. God heard me out of his holy hill. It was not Absalom's holy hill. It was God's holy hill. David knew that even when he was on the throne there, he knew it was God's throne. It was God's rule. It's God's holy hill. God was on the throne. And he would help David. Selah. These two verses, um, when I read them again, um, verse 3 and 4, Thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, glory, my, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I had to think of a song that I haven't sung in, I guess, about 45 years. And um, that um, are these two verses. Um, and um, yeah, I thought, why not share it with you? Uh, after all, as I said um, the past few times, uh, the Psalms are songs. David was a songwriter. He was uh, often out in the field uh, before with his sheep and also here when he was fleeing. He had this little harp with him and he was, he was not only speaking and, and praying out loud, he was also singing. He made these, um, these prayers and these expressions into songs so it's good to sing them it helps also to remind them and to repeat it often um, so yeah let, let me share that uh, with you my glory and the lifter of my head my glory and the lifter of my head for So that's verse 3 and 4 of Psalm 3. 
my glory and the lifter of my head. We get then into the second half of the psalm. It's uh, where the blessings come. It's often so in a prayer we, we lay out, uh, lay before God our case. Eh? We, um, we put our, uh, our trouble before him. Um, it's of course not always and not the only way we pray. There's also lots of thanksgiving and praise. But uh, like in this case, um, the trouble is presented. And God is praised because he can and he will help those that seek him. And so then comes the, the blessing, the answer. And that should be recognized uh, as well. So in verse 5, um, David says, I laid me down and slept. I awaked. For the Lord sustained me. This is a very interesting and beautiful verse uh, in there. Because it is probably the strongest evidence of God's blessing. David was under immense pressure. He had to hide in caves and use stones for his pillow. And it seemed an impossible situation to be able to sleep. But he says, I lay down and slept. Just like that. So simple. He wasn't restless. He wasn't tossing and turning. Not able to sleep. No. He simply lay down and slept. What a blessing God gave him. Such peace in the midst of this dire situation. And in the past, quite some years ago already, uh, I made a separate video about uh, this verse in particular. Which I will leave the link to in the description. The verse continues, he says, I awaked because the Lord sustained me. What does he mean with that? It means that he slept the whole night through without being sleepless or restless in between. When he says I awaked, he means in the morning, after that I slept the whole night. Waking up in the morning was another blessing because many wondered if David would see another day. But God sustained him. It is He who sustains us in our sleep. When we are unconscious, when we are dead to the world, but we keep breathing, our heart pumps, our organs operate. God is watching over us. And in the morning, as it were, He resurrects us. And He gives us another day. He equally sustains us in our difficulties. And it is beautiful to see that David was blessed this way and that he recognizes that this is indeed a blessing. And, and we should too every morning when we wake up. Then verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Why? Because God sustains him. Because God sustains him, David could stand against any enemy whether it be a hundred, a thousand, or tens of thousands. And there were tens of thousands against him. And they were roundabout. Basically, he was surrounded. Basically, he couldn't go anywhere. But God, but God, he knew that the one that was in him was greater than his enemy. As John also reflects in 1 John 4, verse 4, the one that's in me is greater than the one that's in the world. David had this awareness. He knew that God's army was greater, just like Elisha saw God's army of horses and chariots of fire. David saw something that his enemies couldn't see. And we should always remember in times of difficult, difficulties and danger that God is greater. God is always greater. He is always in control. True faith leaves no room for fear. And it's clear. I will not be afraid of tens of thousands of people that set themselves against me, he says. I will not be afraid. If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. He begins this verse by saying, Arise, O Lord. Now David is not commanding God to do anything. But 
Rather, this is a military phrase to go forth and defend and be victor victorious. As a leader who had fought battles, David knew this phrase very well. He had probably shouted it many times to, uh, to his armies, arise. And so did Moses, for example, because Moses had also been an army commander in the Egyptian army, military leader. He knew this phrase also, and he used it also um, to, uh, in the same way David did, to call upon the Lord. In Numbers 10, verse 35, Moses uh, says the following, or it says the following, and it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. It's the same thing. Arise, O Lord, and then comes the following, uh, that there will be victory. And um, the call to be saved is already answered in David's mind and heart, because he switches to past tense, thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Which is uh, an interesting um, phrase there, eh? you have uh, smitten the enemies on the cheekbone and broken the teeth of the ungodly. Uh, it's a, a, a phrase we also find in Psalm 58, in verse 6, where uh, he says, Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. And you would think, why would he be so much focused on breaking the teeth? Uh, well, actually, uh, Psalm 58, verse 6, uh, makes it clear, because it says, uh, uh, Break out the great teeth of the young lions. Lion. So the great teeth are the teeth that a lion uses to, to catch his prey, to kill his prey, and then to tear the, the, the prey apart and eat it. When a lion is without teeth, it won't survive, because it can't eat anymore. It can't hunt and kill and eat. It will die. In other words, breaking the teeth means take away the force of their strength, the, their bow. Uh, whatever it is that um, allows them to, to rise up and fight. The, the phrase, rise up, or arise, O Lord, again it's a call to be defended, but also it's a call for victory. David does not only look for protection. He was protected that night and he would probably be protected the next night and he would sleep and, and get up in the morning but he didn't seek protection he sought victory it was not just a matter of survival because then the threat would still be there no God gives victory where the threat is eliminated and then his glory is restored and it states here in verse 7 that the enemy is ungodly and I said it before, in verse 1, which begins with Lord, that's the difference. David had his God, the enemy was ungodly. Verse 8 then, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, thy blessing is upon thy people, Selah. Salvation belongs to the Lord only, not to nations, not to armies, not to political leaders, but to the Lord only. And that applied in the immediate sense to David, to be saved from this dire situation he was in, but much more than that it applies to the ultimate salvation for eternity. Salvation in, in Hebrew is Yeshua, the, the noun is Yeshua, the verb is Yasha. Yeshua so is salvation. Salvation from God, God being Yahweh or Yah is Yahoshua, from which we get the name Yehoshua, or in short, Yeshua, Jesus. Salvation is belongs to the Lord. Only in Him can we find salvation. Acts 4 verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's only in Jesus. And again, David had this awareness without knowing Jesus as a person, but he knew Jesus as an attribute of God, as a part of the Godhead. 
The psalm ends with David's statement that God's blessing is upon his people. And this shows also David's heart at the time of personal distress. He was in distress. It was his son that was against him. But um, when we see that in, the, in verse 1, he says, um, uh, They that trouble me, and many that rise up against me. But here he says, he speaks about his people. He's not only concerned about himself, but for all of God's people. We see also that David did not pray or call for revenge on Absalom and his followers. He leaves that in God's hands, and God would deal with them in his way. Uh, it was also very hard for David because it was his son, after all, that he was speaking about. The victory that he called for was not just for his own sake, but for all the nation, for God's people. This psalm is a very powerful and encouraging prayer in times of trouble. And the question is, can we say, together with David, O oh Lord, you are my glory and the lifter up of my head. Amen.